had their cases moved to the new system. There were many other changes in the improved bill, but after over 750 original pages and over 300 pages in changes, it's still bad legislation, like I said, and it prioritizes criminals over law-abiding citizens and police officers. The governor lied when he signed the Safety Act. He lied when answering questions about the bill, and he spent tens of millions of dollars running defamatory and false television ads during his campaign. Additionally, those of us, like myself, who gave you the facts were called racists. One of Orland Park's representatives, Justin Slaughter, said opponents were racists, and the objections were racist dog whistles. I haven't heard an apology from any of them. After my comments were made, Snopes, the Associated Press, the USA Today's State Journal Registry, the Daily Herald, YouTube, and Facebook supposedly fact-checked fact my comments and said they were false. Then why the changes? Why was any of this changed if they were false? Because we told the truth, and the fact-checkers do not. Now, personally, I've been here for a while, so I'm used to this defamation and the fabrications from the press. And it, of course, it angers me. I don't think anyone who knows me would think otherwise. But what is much worse is the fact that these lies were perpetrated on Illinois voters, not only by un, undisciplined, unprincipled, and dishonest candidates that have now been elected, but by a complicit, manipulative, and deceitful press who did much worse than ignore the facts. They intentionally misled the public to influence an election. This is not the first time this has happened. Anybody remember in 2004 when 60 Minutes and Dan Rather ran fake letters about then-President Bush? It cost Dan Rather his career. And 60 Minutes apologized and is still on the air, as it has been for 50 years. But their credibility was diminished. Just last week, anyone who's paying attention to the news, Twitter has been exposed for censoring the truth to change the outcome of elections. Calvin Coolidge once said, wherever despotism abounds, the sources of public information are the first to be brought under its control. Just last April, President Biden's administration tried to use the Department of Homeland Security by establishing a committee of public information to combat disinformation. In Orwell's 1984, they called this the Ministry of Truth. This frightens me. It should frighten every one of you, every, everyone that's listening to this, everyone that's in this room. As Thomas Jefferson once said, our, liber our liberty depends on the freedom of the press. And that cannot be limited without being lost. Franklin D. Roosevelt said, freedom of the press is essential to the preservation of democracy. But there is a difference between freedom and license. Editorialists who tell downright lies in order to advance their own agendas do more discredit to the press than all of the censors in the world. Americans value the freedom of speech and the freedom of press, and in my opinion, it is essential to our republic. There is plenty of speech that I don't like, but I have put my own ass on the line to defend your right to say it. responsibility has been abdicated by many members of the media. It is not enough to have freedom of the press and freedom of speech. In order to have better government, we the people need to start thinking and using our ability to reason much more effectively. Until then, we will never get the government we want, but we will always get the government we deserve.